now we actually realize that the internet is important, important. So it's important to have all of the skills um, for the new world, if I can put it this way. And the first one is data scientist. Uh, I put data scientist because it kind of englobes data analysis as well and everything that concerns data. And pretty much the data scientists, all data analysts, all end, it can be both, uses pretty much systems and technology and scientific methods, mathematics, statistics, to use and turn data into useful information that the business owner can use to make various decisions. And right now with the internet, social media and everything going digital, that also includes social media data, marketing data, um, all of the Facebook ads data. You can do Facebook analytics or Google analytics and you don't necessarily need a degree for this as well. You can get certified for data analysis or data science. But pretty much understanding how to manipulate data to extract inside and information, it's a very, very valuable skill set now and moving forward. The next one is software developer. Um, Wu is a person that pretty much just try to understand uh, the needs of a business or anybody that wants to create the software and goes out, designs, tests, and then develop that software or that solution that can solve these problems. And coming back to marketing, the software developer can be like the marketing engineer. Right now, we're actually working with this company called um, Incon, which is building a marketing software to track the investments into marketing. And they're looking for PHP developers. So anything around developing applications, developing websites, developing tools, tech tools that can make our life a little easier or that can solve more problems, it's definitely something that is going to be needed moving forward. So that was number two, software developer. Number three, media buyer. I don't even know if there is a degree for this yet. I don't know, but the media buyer is pretty much somebody that manages advertising, uh, advertising placements or advertising in general on a platform, mostly digital platforms. So this is your Facebook ads manager, Instagram ads manager, Snapchat, TikTok, LinkedIn, all of these platforms or social media platforms that have advertising capabilities. The person that helps you handle that, that whole thing is a media buyer or ads manager. And you can have someone or you can be someone that can do the whole thing, meaning you can do the strategy, you can do the creative ads, the design, you can do the messaging, you can also structure all of the ads and do all of the payments, the buying analysis, or you can just be that person that just knows how to structure the ads and then execute on the placement. Either way, you can do both. I mean, you can do it all, which will be better. But even if you just know how to do the ads, people are always looking for Facebook ads manager and things like that. So this is definitely something to consider. Uh, media buyer. That was number three. Number four, content creator. So somebody will say, oh, content creator is now with tech, which is true. It's more about creating content, right? This is just a little fancy definition that you can read, but pretty much content creator, as most of you guys know, it's more about creating content. Um, if you want to target that to the business world, more uh, contributing with information to the media or digital media. And if you're not a graphic artist like me, right, that's where the tech comes in because there are tech tools that allows you to do all of this content creation very, very simply, even if you have zero tech skills or zero creative skills like me, like Canva, Adobe, a lot of different things that you can learn 
to create content, whether it's for you, for your business, or for the company that you can be or will be working for. And the content creator, it's a little deep because you need to be able to, it could be written words, it could be videos, it could be animations, it could be audio. And also another thing is the repurposing part of it. Because right now, you need to be able to turn a video into audio or turn a video into written words or use written words and turn that into a video. So all of these goes into the content creator and content creation part. And definitely, whether it's for social media or even inside a company itself, because companies that do newsletters, right? So you can learn how to write emails, newsletters, blog posts, all of that is just copywriting and it's content creation. Zero tech skills needed, zero design skills needed that anybody can do. Number five, uh, videography. Um, I would have, I think video editor was the one, but videography sounded a little cooler, so I just put it in there. Um, but today, more than ever, editing videos, it's a must for reels. It really is. And just like I was saying, if you're not a video editor like me, again, the tech tools out there, many different tech tools can allow you to have that skill set quickly and then learn to make very effective, very powerful videos for the company that you can be working for or for your own self. Or just like I said, again, for your for the company itself, right? A lot of companies do trainings. Um, right now with all of the Zoom calls, you need somebody to edit all of that, right? So video editing for sure is a skill set to consider moving forward. And that was my last one, but I have a little bonus and I'm gonna make a bonus sound effect that goes like ding, 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 ding. Live video producer, which is my ultimate favorite, right? Right now, I don't know if you guys know that already, but when the pandemic hit, live video increased by like 90%. In my personal activity, it increased probably by like 120%. So. Live video, it's not going anywhere. It's been here for a minute, but it's just getting started. So it's definitely something to consider. And again, I didn't go to school for this. I learned this from YouTube University. So anyone can learn how to produce live video, which is pretty much managing live broadcast remotely without being on site. Um, a lot of companies, even a lot of big entrepreneurs, I don't know if you guys know Tony Robbins, Tony Robbins, which ha who had more of his income in in-person events, was able to pivot online and doing just big virtual events. So all the way from Tony Robbins to Toronet that, that is doing a virtual event right now, um, live video production, it's a need. And it's a very easy skill set that anybody can learn and anybody can take advantage of. And not only that, um, companies need live shows to promote their, comp their products. Um, they need uh, a lot of company meetings. They do shareholder meetings, all of the Zoom calls. You can use different tech tools to, to, to move your Zoom call from boring to wow or something like that. Even if you don't have a regular uh, sound effect, you can do like me, just with ding, 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 ding. But a lot of tech tools can allow you to do all of these different things, right? So definitely live video production, it's uh, something to consider. So that was my last one. As a quick recap, we have data scientists or data analysts um, software developer or marketing engineer, media buyer or just simply ads manager, content creator, everything around content creation, videographer or video editing, and the last one, live video producer or live video production. And just like Ms. Labo was saying earlier, we can teach you all of these 
Toronet is putting together. Um, Toronet is getting structured to have all of the materials and information necessary so that we can share these to anybody that will be willing to learn. And I'm a little curious, can you guys comment below in the chat, which one of you would you be more interested in? Or uh, which one, I mean, not which one of you, which one of these uh, would you guys be more interested in? And don't forget to follow the Facebook page at Toronet. And that was it. Mohammed, I have a I have a sound effect for you. <laughs> I, I I was I was trying to get the sound effect, but I didn't really have time to put it together. So I was just like, I'll just do the ding 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 ding. <laughs> no worries, perfect. Okay, so I have a few questions. So while everyone else is making comments, comments and questions in the chat box. I have a few questions. Um, number one is, when you say uh, a data scientist manipulates data, can you give us an right. example of what it means to manipulate data? Um, so, for example, there is there is actually a common example that we that we've done in class, which is which is from um, supermarkets. So mm -hmm. they've analyzed the sales. So the manipulation is using the, let's say it's an Excel sheet, Excel, mm -hmm. Excel sheet, yeah. taking that Excel sheet, putting into software is like, maybe it's Python. So you can mm -hmm. write a set of code that can analyze that data. That's what I mean by manipulation. Or it can be a different thing that you may not really need codes, like maybe Tableau that you just upload the data into Tableau and then you can do visualization, you can do charts and things like that that will show you uh, the data. And then from there, you can analyze and then kind of figure out what information it gets you. That made me think of Bentley and Gullybot when you started talking about um, analyze, uh, manipulating data. Um, Bentley, Am I right when I thought about you? Uh, yeah, and uh, manipul uh, Gullibot, um, yeah, takes it and analyzes it, summarizes it, and tries to make it more intuitive to readers so they don't have to read all the data to understand what's going on. I, I was also kind of curious, Mohammed, do you, have you seen the difference between like data visualization as opposed to a data analyst, is that a required skill for a data analyst or just um, how do those two things interrelate? Do you know? Yeah, I, that's actually a good question. To me, I, I think visualization, it's kind of like, um, it's a, I think it's a little craft because as an analyst, you need that visualization skill set. But even when I, when you look for the job, sometimes you will see that they'll need somebody that can visualize through storytelling. So you can be, you can just be like a basic data analyst like me, just know the basic visualization. But I would say that, which is what I want to do. That's what I talked about Tableau because it's something that I want to start working with. But having that visualization as a, craft, I think it's something very, very powerful, especially kind of like you say, if you can turn that data and make it a little simpler and tell a story about it, that's perfect. I think you're absolutely right. I think that's important, especially when you're in business, because that's how you can um, persuade your, um, your client or persuade, you know, whoever it is you're talking to, to you know, think about more funding towards a project and things like that. It is really an art. Okay. Um, another question I had was, how do you personally use data analytics in your marketing career? Is it something you use all the time or when do you use it and how do you most, most of the time use it? Yeah, that's a great question too. Um, in Mark, for me, especially where I've used it the most 
is really understanding and figuring out the social media data, which is, I mean, which is usually the data after I uh, run an ad campaign. So I can look at all of the graphs. It's kind of like Tableau already. So I can just go in there, look at it, and then see what it looks like. But to make it actually very, very simple that actually anyone can use and that may not really necessarily, all of, necessarily need all of the data analysis and technical things. For example, you know, when you post on Instagram or even YouTube, right? The, whether it's for your business or for whatever, Facebook, I mean, Instagram or YouTube gets you some data about that post. So you can just go into these analytics. This is something that I do every day. Every time I post something on Instagram, I'll go into the analytics and then I'll look at the performance. And then from the performance, I make the next decision. Okay, this one performed a little better. That means, oh, okay, maybe people like this kind of post. Um, I think it was one of them was like the baby, you know how um, the babies are all cute into the videos and it seems like everybody likes these kind of videos. So I've posted a few of these, twisted them a little bit to my niche and then found out, found out that, oh, people kind of like these videos. So guess what? I started doubling down on these kind of videos and then see how it goes. So that's kind of how on a day to day I look at analytics with social media. Perfect. Okay. Well, we have a couple of things in the chat box. Dr. T says, Mohammed, you are a superstar. He also said media buying is interesting. I'm going to ask about a question about that too. Dr. T was also saying uh, marvelous information. I work with doctoral students who do interviews for their dissertation work. Any tools that you recommend for automatic transcription of an audio or a video file? Yeah, yes. Um, Descript, there is one, that's what, that's the one that I'm using right now. That's my number one, it's called Descript. And you can do just that. You can upload the video in there, click a button, and then it gives you the whole transcription of the of the thing. And here is the best part. <laughs> this script is so crazy. So you can edit the transcript, right? And then while you edit the transcript, it saves it at the same time. And then you can also cut all the fluff. You know all the ums, ums, ums that you're saying that you can select all of it, click a button, and then it's all gone. Not only it's gone into the transcript, but it's also gone into the video. <laughs> into the video. So Descript is definitely number one. And then number two, there is also Happy Script. These are the two that came to my mind, but I can send you a list, definitely. I have a few of these. But Descript, Happy Script, these two for sure. Yeah, and uh, I had put it in the chat box. Janine was asking about that one. Um, and there's another one, designer, but it's designer with two R's at the end and not E-R. And yeah. designer is kind of like a place, it's supposed to be a tool that helps you to create eBooks really fast. They have too many glitches for me. But one thing that they do have is the ability to take a video. Literally, you can plug a video in and they will transcript that entire thing and put it in a PDF for you. So that's that's another one, designer, two R's. Okay, um, Janine says, if someone learns these skills via YouTube, such as video editing and production, how do they create a portfolio or present themselves to employers? Also, are you advising people to do these jobs as a freelancer or with major brands and corporations? Well, that, that's a good question. I like this. Um, first of all, oh, hold on. I think it's here, yeah. If you're learning via YouTube, how do you create a portfolio? 
Yes, so this is what I did. When I started learning all of these, I just started create, creating content for myself. So I love, um, I mean, I've learned this the hard way, but I've learned to fall in love with personal growth, everything around mindset and leadership. So that's what my channel is about. So I started making my own videos, making my own posts and making my own content around that. And then to build a portfolio, what I've done with my own portfolio, I just put my top performing posts together. And then I put that into, you can actually learn that on YouTube to how to build a portfolio. Um, there was a lot of videos on there. So I put them all together very nicely. And then that's what I use as the portfolio. So that's how I've done it. Like um, doing my own projects, analyzing the performances. You don't really have to do all that, analyzing the performance. This is just my geeking thing side of things, but you don't have to do that. You can just have all of your beautiful arts put together nicely and then show that as a portfolio. It might depend on what you really want to do as well. Um, this is something to pay attention, but you don't have to do all of the geeky. You can just put it all together. Now, um, do this job as a freelancer or major brands. I would say both, honestly. Um, I don't think you should limit yourself for the opportunity, as long as you can, of course. Um, if you can afford to do both, afford, I mean, time-wise, energy-wise, because you also don't want to drink. I've been sick before from doing too much. So you don't wanna to get to that place, but definitely you can consider doing both um, uh, as a freelancer and also for brands and marketing. And by the way, it's actually because I was able to, to test that a lot on my personal account and build a little following that I got Miss Labo's attention. Because I remember when she interviewed me, she said that she saw on my resume that I have um, this, 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 this on social media. And then I started explaining to her. So that's actually, I don't, I don't know if it really helped, but it, it got her attention a little bit. So I know, I know that it works. Definitely, it definitely uh, got my attention and then he sold it. Okay, uh, Janine says, a website portfolio or another uh, platform? She's saying, um, do you, where, do you, where do you recommend you put that portfolio? Yes, I think a website is the ideal. Um, mm -hmm. If you can, that's the ideal. Uh, kind of like uh, your LinkedIn. Maybe a landing page? Profile or something. Yes, landing page, but there is a, there are actually portfolio platforms like portfolio websites where you can use the oh. portfolio. So I think that's the ideal. So if you have the time, that's definitely what I would do. But as a start, you can just have a PDF put together nicely with your story, all of the work that you've done, the services, how you can help, especially how you can help. And then you can just have that in a PDF or PowerPoint. That's, I don't even have my portfolio website yet. I just have the PDF. But mm -hmm. the website is the, the ideal thing to do. Mohammed, I have one more question for you before we move on. And Janine said, thank you. It helps a lot, what you just said. Um, You're welcome. What advice would you give to someone who has a technical background, but they want to break into a creative space or in marketing, an industry such as marketing? Like, what should they do as first steps? Mm. Someone that has a technical background that wants to start in marketing or creative. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, honestly, the first step would be to start unleashing your own creativity. Mm -hmm. so what does that mean i would say if i'm a tech guy all i've done all my life is coding and all of these things and i want to start getting into creative i'll start getting into the creative things that i like and mm -hmm. then start learning skill set which is pretty much exactly what i've done because i didn't know how to edit videos i didn't know how to post anything i didn't 
I didn't even know how to use Canva now that I'm thinking about it. I really had no idea how to use Canva, none, zero, right? But I was so passionate about that idea of helping businesses use social media for the businesses because I've seen my mom struggling for so long. When I've seen that opportunity, I was like, oh my God, I can help my mom and I can help everybody else. So that's what I would say, start learning the how to on, on your own content or on your own creativity by doing the things that you like, because you, you also got to figure out if you really, really like it, right? Yeah. So the easiest way, um, you can just start making stories and things like that, learn how to edit. And then from there, uh, start learning the, maybe the jobs available, figuring out what it is exactly that you want. Because starting doing that will help you figuring out what it is that you like. Or maybe you don't really like editing, you mostly like maybe the copywriting or the messaging. Because for tech people, that's also another avenue. If you wanna get into marketing, you can start learning how to write the marketing messages, which is what we call copywriting. Copywriting, it's just the art of selling with words. That's what copywriting is, selling with words of getting people to take an action with words. So you can learn how to make social media posts. Everybody needs that. Emails, um, blog posts, scripts, and all of that stuff. But as a first step, I would definitely start learning by um, being creative myself. And it's gonna make you happy, honestly. Mm -hmm. I 100% agree. I say, take that, that technical background and then, you know, you'll be working for a bigger company on, you know, on the regular, but on the side, be learning these other things having to do with marketing. Then over time you can transition and you can go from, Hey, just being a data analyst at this big company to being the CMO at another company at a smaller company, because you took two things two or three skills that you have and combine them and that makes you very unique and a great asset to a smaller company right or organization so Mohammed, excellent yeah. job thank you so much for can sharing that can I have with one last thing for the tech, yeah. for the, yes. for the tech guy yeah. yes yes yeah, so and again as a tech person it also kind of depends on your tech skill set right because just like i was saying if you are a developer already or a data analyst already, or a data scientist already, like um, like me as a data analyst, you can target the marketing jobs or maybe the company that needs that for marketing, like Google Analytics. People are always looking for Google Analysts, Facebook Analysts, definitely Google AdWords. That's the Google platform for advertising. This type of analysts are always in demand. And if you're already an analyst or coder, even coder, all of these marketing companies right now, they're trying to figure out how to create their own little technology, little platform. Even Labo Labs is also looking to do that. So definitely your tech skill set, it's very valuable in marketing. You just need to figure out what's the need, right? where is the need for my skill set into marketing and then you go feed that and also don't forget to unleash your creativity because i promise you that will make you happier mm -hmm, so true i just got my apple developer subscription so we will have our app soon but thank you so much muhammad for all of that valuable information I uh, agree 100 with everything you were saying i'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen again and uh, if you want to follow up with Muhammad, check it in the chat box. Muhammad, if you could drop your um, LinkedIn information, your social media information so people can connect with you. So here's some other interesting things going on with ToroNet. Going to play this video. There we go. Oh. Oh, 
goodness. Let's see if that'll work. Hold on, let me see if I can move this. There we go. So that is Activate Purpose from Advance the Seed, the sponsor that I was telling you about. Uh, we are doing a pitch competition and it's going to be on April 30th and May 1st. Uh, the website link is gonna be activatepurposeevents.com. Um, I don't know if it's been linked to the website yet, uh, but that's going to be the website to find out more information. There's gonna be great speakers, workshops, but it said turn your business, your idea into a business, but we're actually also taking business ideas and helping them to learn how to pitch to an investor. And that's what it's all about. So uh, inspirational and motivational speakers, but then also practical um, instruction on how to create that perfect pitch deck and create that delivery. And then what happens after the pitch? that type of information and we'll have five winners the those five winners will get 250 dollars plus more so we're working on those things and i want the toro net community to spread the news about this and um, start funneling in some students and also small business entrepreneurs founders and uh aspiring entrepreneurs aspiring fine founders who haven't uh raised their first seed round yet all right, so I have something different this week. Um, interviewing tips from a tech recruiter. So we have different contributors who are not on the meetings all of the time, but they're still sending in information. And one of our contributors sent in uh, some information to share. Well, two of them did, and I'm gonna get to the second one also. But here is some information from our tech recruiter, one of them, uh, avoid saying we. Hey, Mohammed, can you let David into the meeting? If you're yeah, still- no, just... Okay, perfect. All right, it says, avoid saying we. This is what he says. I have performed quite a, a bit of interviews for consultants and employees to join my team or the team of other managers. Many times the invite interviewee speaks in terms of we instead of me. This is not a good thing. When I ask, tell me what you have been working on in your current role, many times I get the answer in terms of we. Then This then leads me to think that you are a contributor. So then I'll ask directly, if I were to hire you today, what will your team lose that we gain? Good question. Again, if the person doesn't expand on this, then I'm led to believe that they are just hanger-ons. And I know what that means. We'll talk about that. I, I wonder if you know what that means. What is a hanger-on? Put that in the chat box if you think you know what a hanger-on is. What you should know is that this is your time to sell your skills. In my interviews, I state, you can answer a question based on first person experience, based on your awareness or say, I don't know. Never hide behind your team's accomplishments. We are hiring you, not them. Finally, if you don't know the answer, just say, I don't know. If you try to answer a question as if you have done the thing, I'm double click clicking to see how deep you understand it. If you show awareness, then I will ask you if you have any experience with something comparable. Bottom line is in technology, we are always looking to offload work, not train. 
we understand that we have to train in some degree, but we want short ramp up time. So always look to sell your ability to contribute and give to areas where your impact can be immediately can be immediately felt, I believe is what he meant. Review your resume and make sure you know your talking points around contributions and awareness. Be prepared to draw comparisons between tech stacks and skills. Never hide behind your team's accomplishments. We are hiring you and not them. Finally, if you don't know the answer, just say, I don't know. So he repeated himself to make sure you understand. Just say, I don't know. Someone told me that a long time ago as well. Jason Corbett, he is a tech recruiter, I believe at Delta Airlines. And so he's the one that sent in that information and I'm really, really grateful to him. I can't see the chat box right now. Does anybody, does anybody answer the question, what is a hanger on? Yes. What is a hanger on? Yes, who said that? Who, who knows what it is? Miss Shirley, I think maybe she can unmute herself and read it. Oh, you want me to read it? You can read it, Mohammed. Oh, okay. She, she said, anger on is someone who rides on the coattail of their teammates instead mm -hmm. of being an active contributor. They Absolutely. may contribute if told what to do. They might contribute if they're told what to do or they may contribute you know, every, every project has different tasks and everybody has their different role. Um, I think a hanger on is not just a person who was told to do something and they did it. I mean, that's, that's what a lot of times they do. And we can't say, oh, you didn't go over and beyond. So you're a hanger on. I think a hanger on is a person that really didn't give much value to the project outside of the exact thing they were told to do. And they only do exactly what they're told to do. And in terms of ideas, enthusiasm, um, just any other insight or, or value they're not giving, or sometimes they're not even doing that. You know, they're not even um, really giving their best. So when, whenever someone asks them on an interview, what did you do? Oh, we did this, we did that. Um, and you do have to ask those deeper questions to dig deeper to see what they actually did because a company is, is looking to hire you because they, they want to see what you can bring, how you can add value, how you can make it better. Like, yes, they understand that they're giving you the job, giving you a job and that way it's helping you, but really they want to see how you're going to help them. And um, if you're just a hanger on, you know, that doesn't add much value. Does anyone else have something to say on this? Do we have more in the chat box or someone want to come off of mute and add something to that conversation? Okay, yes, but if, if you would like to be a contributor, you can send things to us too. And I could just, you know, just like I did for Jason, just put it in right here, but uh, we appreciate just diversifying some of the content we give. So here's who's hiring. Zoom is hiring. This came from um, Lejeune Lays. He's a recruiter at Zoom. And he sent me um, two things they're hiring for, software engineer for intern during the summer and software engineer for a new grad position. And all of that information is in the Toronet Facebook group. So if you're watching the replay of this, find this information in our group and just join it. And then you'll get a lot of things first before it comes to the actual meeting. All right, so next week we have Amy Razor and she's here today because I don't have her topic. Amy, do you want to come off of mute and let us know what you'll be talking about on next Friday? Well, we are still narrowing it down, but it's either going to be uh, preparing for the job. So making sure that your social media and all of your online presence is appropriate for going to get a job um, or general business information. So I will uh, confirm that, but I was just putting in the chat. I'll be here next week and, and I'll put my information in if anybody wants to reach out before then or, or needs any kind of support. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I'm looking forward to that. I think that getting ready for the job is really good, you know? And then I was also, um, I don't know who I was talking about, talking with earlier this week about 
Oh, it was Shuva, one of our mentors. He's going to be speaking too soon. And we were talking about what his topic is going to be. And he's going to be talking about also like uh, what to do after you get the job and how to get your promotion. So he's going to be talking about how to get a perfect score, I believe, on your evaluation or a good score on your evaluation so that you can get that extra $5,000 promotion um, a year. So he's going to go in more detail about that. But I think that's good, you know, getting the job and then also talking about how to thrive in that job. So if you have any questions or comments, let us know. Go to the website, submit a form. You can call, you can email, um, and also send any resources. So if you're watching this right now and you come across any free resources, any job postings that's tech related, send it all our way. We appreciate that. Make sure that you join our Facebook group on ToroNet. Uh, we're still growing it, so keep inviting your students, inviting your teenagers to join on there. And then follow us on um, social media as well. We're going to be, like I posted this, the post from Jason on there, and I'm going to be posting more job postings there as well. Um, and let us know, what can the community do for you? So is there anybody on the call right now that's looking for any type of tech connection or opportunity or guidance. And that person, if it's if you're in the room, you can just come off of mute and say so. Um, otherwise, we can move forward. Um, but yeah, definitely reach out whenever you have a need in the tech space. We're here to be your community. So I, before we go, I have a quote from Michelle Ruiz, the C CEO of Bias, Biasync. And it's basically a company that uses software to show companies if they have biases in their hiring, uh, which is a big deal. I was in Fishbowl this week um, looking at different complaints that tech females professionals have and biases are a big thing. But she says, if people doubt how far you can go, go so far that you cannot hear them anymore. I love that quote. I feel like I heard it somewhere, but I didn't know who actually said it. But that is awesome. So if there are not any announcements, anyone have any announcements before we go? Any meetings, tech meetups, or a job fairs or anything you want to share? Any other opportunities? Bentley. There, uh, there is a weekly no-code meetup for people that want to learn to use technology but don't want to do, uh, learn how to code, um, which is a great way to get started. It is a gateway drug to coding, so be very careful. Um, <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, if uh, it's uh, Wednesdays, it's, it's based in the Dallas area, but open to anyone from anywhere. Um, I don't have a link to it at the moment, but. Uh, What's the name of it? You remember? Uh, it's No Code Open Coffee Club. Um, I think they're going to rebrand soon. Um, if you see, if you, if you find my Twitter at BNTLYD or go to BentleyDavis.com and look for my Twitter and you'll see some posts about it. Uh, it's probably the easiest way to find it. All right. That is perfect. So go to BentleyDavis.com, find the Twitter and just scroll in, you'll have that no code open coffee is in Dallas. Yep. Perfect. I uh, just got an email this morning from uh, the TWC, Texas Workforce Commission. They just approved a grant for over $3 million to any IT apprenticeships. Um, and I know that TCC is going to be a part of that some some way, right, Dr. T? Yes, indeed. I, I saw that. I I, I uh, apologize. I haven't been able to look at that email in depth, but um, certainly we're going to look into it. And I, I'm speak with my dean uh, shortly after this, and, and let's get on that uh, bandwagon. And I, and I know Wahiba would be very very appreciative of that email as well. I, I saw mm -hmm. you send it to her, so. Well done, and, and thank you so much for these events. I've been taking copious notes here, 
And uh, and I, I just each week I'm looking forward to it and I'm spreading the word. I'm telling everybody I know about the Facebook group. So stay tuned. Let's grow those numbers and everybody keep up the great work. Awesome. Yeah, I read that email thoroughly and I'm going to read it a couple of more times. But I know that TCC qualifies and I know that my apprenticeship falls under IT. So, <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. More so, better. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. um, David, did you have anything that you wanted to share with the group before we go? Um, nothing too specific, just kind of the same same offer as always. I mean, I'm right now leading a, a new initiative for the Dallas Global Shapers backed by the World Economic Forum. So what we're doing is if you have a startup, um, let me know. And we have a lot of volunteers that are willing to provide pro bono work based on the level and the need of your startup, whether it's raising money or maybe something more specific like financial modeling skills or some support on operations. And equally, if you would like to, you know, some experience at taking your first first jab at working with some of these startups, if you'd like to volunteer or get involved, uh, please let me know. We are looking for both volunteers and startups who need some volunteer work. So I'm facilitating that. Um, also in conjunction with all the work that Lebo is doing with both Lebo Labs and ToroNet. So this extends to anyone and everyone really. Um, just trying to be a good steward of the ecosystem here and, and provide as much as I can. Um, you can guys feel free to reach out to me um, on my LinkedIn, on my email, anything really, I'm really open. I'm also on the Facebook group ToroNet as well. Um, so you could just drop a line, although the fastest way to get to me would be my email and my LinkedIn. But yeah, no, just other than that, really happy to be here. Thank you, Lavo, for creating this 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 group, this community. I'm just would like to help out uh, in any ways I can. So if there's other other requests that I can help out with with my background, with my connections, I'd love to. Yes, please. Whatever um, you know, opportunities that you see, um, send those that those our way. Meetups resources, job postings, internships, apprenticeships, send all of that, anything, uh, connections with recruiters who are willing to like help people with their resumes, even you helping with like resume reviews, anything like that. I'm definitely going to reach out to you definitely. about for the tech startup um, pro bono work as well. And by the way, my, my interns love David. They're always talking about how much they do. Corbin and Amy really, really appreciate everything you do with them. So um, we appreciate you. Oh, and then thank you, uh, Bentley. Bentley dropped the, uh, he dropped the link. So, the, yeah, no code, open coffee club. Thank you for okay. that. Perfect. Awesome. All right. And great camera, Bentley. I mean, that's crystal. Yeah, it's new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll do a, uh, we could maybe I could do a, an intro about professional cameras that cost way too much money. Oh, yeah. yeah. I have like this 480p <laughs> since forever. Oh my gosh. It and, look that and, and Bentley, I'd love to hear about that microphone too, because you know, I'm seeing people, they look kind of cool with a microphone like that. I need to, oh. I need to get one of them. <laughs> the NPR yeah. voice. Welcome to Toronto. <laughs> yeah. He's definitely doing a podcast or about to start one, I can tell. So you guys, you've been amazing. Thanks so much. Join us next time for Amy Razor and maybe another speaker is going to join. We don't know, but I appreciate you guys. This replay is going to be available very soon. You guys have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you again. Thank you very much again. Hello. Have a good one. Bye-bye, y'all. Bye.